So I'm Anise Lurier from UCBL. And uh, what I'm gonna present to you right now is um, uh, another method for positioning uh, a model, but uh, not, with, uh, not with the SOFA simulation, but directly with the uh, FEM uh, simulation. Uh, so uh, this method uh, is based on the prepositioning uh, module since uh, it provides a plausible solution for the skeleton. We can control easily uh, several uh, type of uh, uh, like motion, like landmarks, uh, frame controller, knee controller, stuff like that. So we could directly use them for um, uh, move the model by a simulation. <coughs> and uh, for th for this, uh, uh, we implemented the several strategies uh, in um, Python script. Uh, uh, so, as Philip said uh, this morning, uh, C++ is uh, definitely not a cup of tea for us, but uh, Python is, uh, is not diff that different as uh, MATLAB, for example, or Scilab. So it's quite easy to uh, write scripts uh, for positioning uh, a model uh, in Piper. And there are many vari variables that are inside Piper that we can control, like the controller. So we developed three strategies that are impl implemented in the, in, the, in the Python script, and this script uh, either controls uh, several things like, uh, like landmarks or stuff like that, and then writes directly the inputs for uh, FEM simulation. So the first simulation, the first strategy is uh, implemented in, the, in, uh, this, uh, in, this, uh, in this script. So uh, we, uh, the user will use only uh, two positions, so the, f the initial position of the model and the position of the model after uh, positioning through the pre-positioning module, for example. And uh, then it will uh, run the scripts and it will directly write the inputs to with the prescribed motion for from the initial uh, the initial uh, model to the final one. So for this, uh, there are only the nodes of the bones that will be used to uh, compute displacement uh, vectors. So uh, the first there is a first option that consists in uh, drive the motion through uh, uh, zero length uh, beams. Uh, or you can also, in order to prevent uh, fractures, you can uh, add uh, a constraint on the rigid body between the, the, the extremity of the beam and the, no the node of the, of the bone. However, this, uh, this last option is quite experimental because uh, we've got uh, instability uh, issues. So you can, you can tune uh, parameters of like viscosity or damping of your uh, constraint nodal rigid body in your simulation. So uh, for large motion, for so this uh, this uh, st first strategy works very well for small motion, sm small range of motion, and or for translation. But if we if your motion is a large rotation or large uh, motion, uh, it, you can have some problems because the the motion is directly uh, uh, interpreted from the initial position to the final one. So for example, for this rotation. Uh, you can have uh, fractures because uh, the bones uh, have has to be very compressed before uh, getting that position. So the the, the point of this uh, second strategy is to use uh, an alternative position. So uh, this is the same, exactly the same as the previous one, but the user will use an, inter an intermediate state. So for that, he is going to uh, run two simulations. The first one, uh, for the first one, he will, will put like uh, the, the half of the of an angle or a displacement that he wants. And then at the end, he will save the model. And at the end, he will run the entire simulation. So at the end, here we have three models, the initial one, the intermediate one, and the final one. And this, by running the script, like previously, it runs directly uh, the input for the simulation. So the results showed uh, encouraging results. We tried it for uh, the child model, but also for the GHBM uh, M50 model. So the models are positioned, and uh, this is uh, quite important. They are renewable afterwards. So there is a third strategy that consists in uh, making the same thing as uh, I showed you previously, but to use more intermediate uh, states and to uh, 
defining them and to positioning the, the model uh, automatically. So this is what I'm going to show you right now. All right, so here is the child model that I just uh, loaded in the Piper. First, as Thomas said, I'm going to fix uh, a few bones, like the everything excepted those bones and the arm, the right arms. Then I want to control the right knee. I don't want the, the ankles to be rotated during the simulation so that we constrain them. <coughs> I want to, uh, so this frame, all right. So this is, a this is the first frame I'm going to control. For uh, the landmarks, I'm going to try to control the third direction of this, uh, in, uh, this landmark in x, y, z. And finally, I'm going to use a frame controller, so the right hip frame on the right femur with a third rotation. All right, it's not the Okay, so this one. And what it is needed to do is uh, first you need to um, check uh, all nodes because uh, every time uh, an 80 million targets will be uh, reached, the model will be saved. So this box has to be checked. And what I'm going to use is this option. This option is uh, when you make the positioning, for each time step, it's going to uh, run the last, uh, the last Python script that was already uh, launched. So for I'm going to show you, for example, this is the script. I'm going to launch. So the arguments, so this is a Python script. It's delivered, of course, in the Piper application. So for, exa for example, I want to export my model, let's say, in, uh, yeah. let's say in that folder. The name of the model, by default, uh, is an uh, import model. So this is the model I want to be positioned. Then I need to say uh, which frame I want to be controlled. So for here, this is the three uh, controllers that I've uh, opened here. So the joint controller, a landmark controller, and the frame controller. And then when it's done, I need to uh, say uh, the, de the degrees of freedom. So, uh, for example, for the left knee, I want uh, uh, a rotation of 75 degrees around um, with respect to the y-axis. For the fr this is for the frame for the frame controller and for the landmarks. So for example, here 200 uh, uh, cent uh, millimeters. And the final uh, the final uh, argument is the number the number of uh, intermediate uh, positions. So for here, let's say. Uh, Just one. All right. Let's say four uh, intermediate positions. So this is the last script that has been uh, launched. It did not. Uh, it did not uh, do anything. It's normal. So then, I'm gonna. Uh, so first, I need to tune something here. All right. Um, so I'm going to press on positioning, and for each time step, it's going to run the script. So this is, you can see here, this is the first intermediate target. For example, for uh, the this displacement of the landmarks, I wanted that there is uh, 200 uh, millimeters of displacement. So the first step is uh, 50 millimeters, then it will be 100, then 150, and at the end, uh, 200 millimeters, and uh, the model is saved uh, either uh, under certain conditions. 
uh, if uh, the intermediate uh, target is reached, if the, there is no instability, so if the velocity of the model is close to zero, and uh, there might be some instability, still some instability, so there is also a timeout equal to 20 seconds. If there is nothing happening uh, before 20 seconds, it saves automatically the model. So at the end, yeah, so now the, the, um, the, the inputs are created. No, 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 no. They should be created. Yeah, they are here, because I forgot one slide, but they are, they are here. And you just have to launch uh, this file in, a, in, a, like in simu any simulation. You then just have to here to put your, the name of your model. And at the end, you have the, the simulation. And of course, at the end, you can save the nodal coordinates or whatever. So it just to sum it, it's just an automatic uh, way to perform uh, the positioning with uh, a finite element simulation. And uh, we can see that, of course, here the skin, I mean, the material properties, properties of the skin, for example, are not, uh, uh, have not been defined uh, for such motion. So the skin is, uh, the, beha the behavior of the skin is quite weird here because of the incompressibility and stuff like that. So by improving the material properties, we could have a, a better behavior. <laughs>